Hi. Hi, everybody. And hi, Tanya. And thank you very much for um, letting me share this wonderful technique with you today. Um, it's really my pleasure to introduce to you the Mystic Mountain Brush category inspired by our friend Bob Ross. You may remember learning about uh, learning to paint with Bob years ago, or even currently on uh, your local PBS uh, channels. Um, even when we made mistakes, we knew it was just part of the plan and we learned from each one. He taught us to employ those happy accidents in our work, and he often said that, it, that he just wanted to show you how to do it and then turn you loose in the world, and that's what we're going to do a little bit of today. He was unrivaled in his ability to spout verbal poetry faster than it took to paint one of those happy little clouds. And one of my favorite um, uh, sayings that he had was, the secret to doing anything is believing that you can do it. Anything that you believe you can do strong enough, you can do it. Anything, as long as you believe. So whether you're just discovering the painting techniques of Bob, I hope you will enjoy this painting demonstration of Mystic Mountain inspired by the paintings of Bob Ross. So we're going to start off, everybody, by selecting, um, I've got myself uh, set up with the Mystic Mountain custom palette here. And what I've done is I've taken my uh, Mystic Mountain brush category and using opening up the flyout and using my shift key, all I'm doing is dragging out the brushes that I'm going to be using today. And I place them on a custom palette here and I will be going to that custom palette to pick the brushes. And I will tell you each brush that I'm using here as I'm going forward. So we're going to begin by choosing the brush called the 2-inch landscape brush. And we're going to be choosing phthalo blue. And um, you may have the Mystic Mountain brush um, uh, color library here that you can uh, pick your colors from or you can do some of your own mixing. Now a lot of this I've done before because mixing does take a little time, um, but it is real beneficial if you've uh, created a mixer palette, go ahead and mix those colors that you think you're going to be using. And I have a little uh, sample here that um, of some of my favorite colors that I like using that were based upon Bob's colors that he, he used. So I'm going to pick some of this nice phthalo blue here. And with the brush, um, I always encourage you to do a couple of things. Reset your brush to make sure that brush is set to its default settings. And I also like to have my brush calibration or my brush tracking available to me also. And you can open this by having your command bar open from the window menu and then selecting command bar. And using the brush tracking, if you're not getting what you see me doing here, then that usually means that um, you, know, you may need to go in there and do a little brush tracking and open it up, make a few little brush strokes based upon your pressure, your stylus pressure, and then um, go ahead and select OK. okay. And that way, you're working with your particular unique pressure stylus of your, uh, your, uh, your stylus on the canvas. Now, I'm going to start off by uh, adding a layer directly above the canvas layer. And I also want to point out that we're going to, be have, we're going to choose Pick Up Underline Color, and we're going to enable that. And the reason we're doing that is because it's giving us that same wet and wet technique that uh, Bob used by using liquid white on the canvas, on his canvas. It keeps the paint wet, it picks up the color from the underlying layers and allows us to blend those colors beautifully on the canvas. So we've added our new layer, we've got our color selected, and we're going to begin by uh, painting into the sky with uh, these little circular motions. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to decide where we want to put our clouds. So remember this is, as, 
as Bob said, this is your world. You can put those clouds wherever you want to put them. And all we're going to be doing is going through here and just kind of deciding where we want to put our clouds. We're actually creating the uh, basic uh, shadows of the clouds. And we're leaving some of the white of the canvas where we're going to be developing those clouds later. So this is just a real simple little effect. We'll do a little bit darker values up there at the top. Then you have two options here. Um, I like using the two-inch blender brush. And what I'm going to do is select that brush. And on that same layer, I'm going to come in here and on just the edges of the white, I'm going to begin in these little circular motions going around the edges. And you can see now that that starts to kind of make sense. We're starting to build those little areas of where our clouds are going to be. Or as Bob would say, where they're going to live. And remember again, this is your world. You can put those clouds wherever you want to put them. Hey, Karen. Yeah. Mel has a question, and I'm sorry, Mel, I don't know if, if that's a female or a male, but what size DPI, you know, I didn't, maybe I missed it, what size or dimension? Yeah, on the canvas size, right. And I um, actually have painted this scene over and over again, and I've used several different sizes. I'm working uh, a little bit larger today because of the fact that um, I want to be able to show you each one of these techniques pretty clearly so you can see what's going on. But I work on either uh, the paintings that I have done are 12 by 16, 16 by 20, or 18 by 24 at 150 ppi. Okay. Today I am working at, and let me go ahead and show you what I'm at. I'm at uh, 2175 by 2850 at, 100, uh, at 150 ppi. Okay? Thanks, Karen. No problem. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead now and continue just, just blending those edges very softly. Not going into the blue at all, just the very edges. And once we've done that, we're going to move over to the brush called the Soft Cloud Detail. Now again, there's two brushes in this brush category that you can use, and you may enjoy one over the other. The first one is the Soft Cloud Detail. The second brush would be the Impressionist Cloud, and that's another beautiful brush to employ uh, uh, the cloud uh, formations with. So what I've done here is I've picked up um, a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of white, and done a very, very small amount of uh, that alizarin crimson to the white and made a little mixture that has just a bit of a tinge of pink in it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a, uh, we're going to go ahead and form those clouds and build those clouds up and uh, really take advantage of some of the shapes that you start to see emerging here. So very, very softly, very gently, you'll notice that a little harder pressure with this brush, you're going to get a little more detail. And notice that I'm just putting the bright part or the, the tops of the clouds just on those areas around where we did the blending. And so maybe I'll build a cloud up down here. And employing a little bit softer pressure, you'll get a little bit of blending with this brush. Maybe a little more of a cloud down here. You just kind of have to see what, what forms and where you want to put your clouds.
Now we're going to, uh, after we've done that, we're going to move on over to the two-inch blender one more time here. Notice the reset setting is on 0%, and I'm going to actually, with nice circular motions, again, go into the center, and we're going to be careful to try to leave those that outside edge of the cloud showing. So we get some nice detail on the edges of those clouds. While you're painting away, mm -hmm. we are wondering what tablet are you using? Yeah, I'm just using the Intuos Pro 5. This is just my old tablet I've been using for quite a quite a quite a bit of time now. <laughs> Uh, Intuos Pro. It's not the newest Pro, it's just the Intuos Pro 5, so it's an older tablet. Okay, and would you recommend using a tablet versus trying to paint with a mouse? Yes, I certainly would. Um, uh, you know, you can paint with a mouse, uh, you certainly can do it, um, but I think in terms of getting the techniques and the, the style that we're getting here, uh, it's a it's a lot more difficult uh, to work with a mouse than it is with a with a tablet and stylus. Uh, you're just going to have a whole different painting experience with um, uh, using the uh, a stylus. It's just so much so much better. I'm using um, actually the stylus I'm using is the art pen, um, but I tend to go back and forth. Um, I painted this scene many, many times with, uh, by simply using the standard grip pen. Uh, so you can do that. You don't have to have an art pen for this. There's no reason why. Uh, it still works great. I'm going to get a nice big brush here and I'm just going to kind of push all these clouds up a little bit, get some nice wispy look here. And I might say, by the way, that uh, I'm going to try and get this in pretty quickly for you, but there's always a joy of going back at the end of your painting and doing your final details. So if you want to go back into the clouds and add more detail, if you want to go back into your mountains and add more detail, you can certainly, certainly do that. Um, so uh, under the time constraints that we have here, um, I'll do the best I can for you, but uh, remember that you can always go back in and, and get those final details in at the end of the painting as well. Okay, so we're going to uh, get our clouds in, we're ready to go, and the next step we're going to pick up is the two-inch landscape brush one more time here. We're going to uh, go ahead and you can either sample some of this phthalo blue or pick it from your um, color set or from your mixer pad. I'm just going to sample this color right in here using my Alt key. And from the bottom here, I'm going to start from the left-hand corner and just kind of pull the color towards the center. But I'm being careful because I want to keep a little bit of this nice white in the center here, this nice reflection. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. Again, I'm taking the right corner and pulling out. And then I'm going to go back to my two-inch blender here, and I'm going to do the same from the left corner. I'm going to pull and blend. Nice light pressure, doesn't have to be real heavy. Same from the right, and just pull right in. And then I'm just going to go back and forth and give this, give this a nice little blend. We're doing a rather still water scene, so the so it's okay to have this nice, still, calm looking water at the bottom. Okay, now the next step we're going to do is our mountain. So we're going to decide basically where, how big, where we want to put our mountain. 
And if you're painting right along with me, you know, again, this is your decision. You put that mountain where you want to put it. We're going to start off with a brush called the number five painting knife, and we're going to pick that up. And Bob used a, 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 the palette knife quite often in his work, and in Painter 2018, we've we have a wonderful new brush category called Thick Paint. And in Thick Paint, um, we have uh, palette knives that we can use to create wonderful, wonderful effects. And I'm going to start off with something very basic, very simple here that I think you'll uh, understand very clearly uh, how to use this brush and maybe to, you know, as you go further in this process, you'll enjoy uh, having lots of fun with palette knives and thick paint. The, the thing I do want you to have open, though, if you're working along with me, is the papers panel. And then once you've enabled this brush, the number five painting knife, you're going to notice on the property bar that we have a little option in the center here called Show or Hide Thick Paint Panel. And if you click that, it's going to open up this thick paint media panel for you. And there's just a couple of things that um, we're going to uh, work on with this brush. We're going to keep it very, very simple. But we're going to go ahead and choose the type option here. And you'll notice that there's several different options here that we can choose. But we're going to simply start with paint. And we're going to uh, not worry about any paper texture at this point. So we'll just have our basic paper texture selected. And I'm going to pick up the color uh, called the uh, Mountain Mixture. And this would really depend upon what you're trying to show here. But if you wanted to just build a great big mountain here and show a great big mountain, then you could certainly work with a little bit darker color. But in this case, I'm going to work with a little bit lighter value in this uh, mountain as I start to build it because of the fact that I want this mountain to look like it's back in the distance a little bit. So we'll start off with something more in the mid, mid area here, mid tones. And we're just going to begin building our mountain. So I'm going to start maybe right about here. And I'm just going to take a one little brush stroke up and then one down and one up and then one down. And this is very simple. And then with some nice firm pressure, I'm going to spend a little time just kind of building this mountain shape. And don't be, uh, don't be shy about putting some nice firm pressure on this brush. You know, you can, you can do that. And as I get to the edges here, I'm going to put a little bit softer pressure and just blend these little edges out a little bit. Might build that mountain top up a little bit higher. And just so we've got two little mountains kind of in the distance here. Now, if I was building a great big mountain, I would make it a little bit higher. But in this case, we're just doing a little soft mountain in the distance. And you'll notice also on the layers palette over here that when I picked up that painting knife and started painting with a thick paint, you'll notice that it added a thick paint layer. And this is unique to Painter 2018. Um, on my custom palette, I always like to have what's called a new thick paint layer, so you can add that as well and have that available to you. Or you can simply do it directly from the new layer option and opening the fly out and adding new thick paint layer as you're working. So with that said, I want to do a little bit of blending here and create what we call atmospheric conditions. So we know that when we're looking at mountains, they'll tend to be a little bit sharper on the top, more detailed. And as we go down to the bottom where all the atmosphere takes place, uh, where all those um, molecules and whatnot are bouncing off the sunlight and all the other elements within that, we, we get a little bit softer look towards the end of the, uh, towards the bottom of the mountain. So two brushes, you can use the two-inch blender here, or you can 
choose your two inch landscape brush, and I like using this one for this technique, and take the reset setting all the way down to zero, and now what happens is we can actually blend with that brush. So I'm going to take the edges and I'm just going to very softly blend that thick paint down. And you might be saying, well, gosh, I'm, I'm blending, and why am I blending? Well, what, am, what am I doing to get that blending going here? And the reason is we have, again, that pick up underlying color selected, and that gives us the ability to, um, to blend the colors from the layers beneath. So this is a really nice little trick if you're working with thick paint and you want to create some blending, then add a layer, choose pick up underlying color, and then you can blend that thick paint really nicely. Now we're going to go back to a new thick paint layer, and we're going to go back to the number five painting knife, and we're going to add some snow up there on those mountaintops. So what I like doing is just uh, selecting a white or even an off-white. A titanium white isn't pure white. It's a little bit off, and I think I'll just go ahead and choose that one. That is also on the Mystic Mountain palette here. And this time, we're going to come over and choose a paper texture. So we're going to pick up a paper texture called the Window Frost. And I'm going to open up the panel here so you can actually see this. And you have what's called a paper scale, so you can play with that and experiment a little bit with it. And I'm just going to keep mine relatively small here. Now we're going to again look at our thick paint panel, and this time we're going to go to the type option, and we're going to choose paint with grain, and we're going to select that option. And we're going to also come down to where we see canvas here, and grain height, and I've got, you'll notice that I have my grain height up pretty high here, so we're going to set it to around 94% there. And on the right side of the mountain, I'm going to start right here up at the top, and I'm just going to start to very, very softly, just so the paint breaks across the top of the mountain here. And then okay. this mountain as well. Uh-huh. Rod asked a great question, and he's wondering, does the palette knife rotate in any direction, and is that because you're using the art pen, or? That's because I'm using the art pen, yes, but um, I'm going to switch over to, I'll go ahead and switch over to my, uh, just my standard pen here. And you'll notice that I'm able to use that pen as well. I don't get all the rotation that I get uh, you know, with the art pen, but it still does a great job. OK, perfect. Thank okay. you for explaining that. Yeah. No problem. I can, I can stay with the art pen, if, uh, with the, just the standard pen. If, if people would like to see me just stick with that. <laughs> That would be fine, too. Um, or I can go back to the art pen, whatever. Um, I don't know how many people are using art pen and how many aren't using art pen here today. So There's people logging in now. Doug is using an art pen. I okay. think probably um, the majority of the people are not, but I also think that there's a benefit in learning what it allows you to accomplish that you don't get with the regular pen. Yeah, just I think it's just important that you know that you can use the the standard pen here. Uh, I love, uh, you know, I I love both of them. I don't, you know, I think there's there's flexibility in using that art pen because of the fact that you do get all this, you know, wonderful rotation. Works very nicely, by the way. Uh, the art pen does when you're uh, working with a palette knife and you want to get you know, some of these different angles going on. So in that case, uh, you know, I think that that's, you know, very, very beneficial. I am going to uh, go ahead and go to this top layer here, and I'm going to hold down my shift key now and 
select that final layer here and then Command E or Control E and I'm going to actually collapse all those layers together now. Okay, so everything's collapsed together onto one layer and I can just continue building from that point on. So as I add, you know, start working again with a thick paint um, and go back to painting with grain here, you know, I can continue putting in uh, you know, some more snow, building detail, building form into the mountain. And these are all the things that you can do as you go back at the end of your painting and do those final details. So if you want to make your mountain taller or lighter or add more snow, do more blending, you know, that's your prerogative to go back and uh, get that done, okay? So again, that's the shift and then control E and that will collapse your layers going forward. Okay, so let's go on now and we're going to uh, do a little more blending on the bottom of that uh, mountain and we're going to again choose that two inch blender and just very softly in kind of a circular motion here do a little soft blending and pull that mountain down. Remember we want this mountain to kind of look like it's uh, back in the distance. And I'm probably running out of time here so I'm going to go a little bit faster. <laughs> and then I'm going to pick up a brush now called Mountain Mist. And with kind of a white color here I'm going to uh, start to build in the mist around the mountain here. I might pick up a little more blue in that, a little more white I should say. And here you can just create that look of kind of clouds going around the mountain, create a little more atmosphere. Another brush you can use for this would be the, um, the soft cloud detail if you just wanted to pull in a little more magic color. So you're, you're finding that a lot of these brushes are very versatile in terms of where you can use them, how you use them. And then go to your, your soft cloud blender and then just blend the bottoms again so you're creating that feeling of mist at the bottom. And very well, soft. Is, Go ahead. Sorry. sorry. No There's problem. a good question asking what is the purpose of collapsing the layers? Yeah, I, I just don't want to end up with too many layers. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I will often just collapse them. You know, the real, the real key uh, here, really important thing here is that when you have this pick up underlying color enabled, um, again, it gives you that ability to blend the layers. So um, if I get too many layers going, uh, you know, it just gets a little bit confusing as far as where I'm going to put in things, how I'm going to employ certain brushes and effects. So just by collapsing some of those layers, it just makes it a lot simpler. Um, knowing that you can add a new layer, you can delete a layer, you still got that canvas uh, down below that uh, acts as, as that point of uh, blending. And um, that's really the only reason. Uh, you know, in, in many other things that I will do in Painter, I will end up with, you know, lots and lots of layers. But uh, in this case, we'll just keep it very simple. We don't have to be complicated and, uh, you know, just, just collapse layers as we go along. And you'll notice that the blending just gets nicer and nicer as you do this and collapse layers too and very, very soft pressure here, very, very soft pressure with the soft cloud blender. All right, 
let's go on and create our evergreens and we're going to start off with the brush called the uh, foliage and tree brush and this is one that um, I recommend you bring up the brush tracking and do a few little brush strokes with this guy um, I have one called uh, I have a uh, preset here called Sargent that I keep and use and that one is kind of my signature pressure that I use with most of these uh, brushes so uh, that's one that I've just saved that I use over and over again because it, it seems to be pretty perfect for, for what I'm doing. The evergreens are again made with the foliage and tree brush and uh, along with the mountain mixture and what we're going to do is hold the brush vertically and touch the canvas to create um, the center lines of the trees and then we're just going to kind of bring them down. So what we're going to create here is a look of little um, little foothills in the background. But what we want to do and be very careful with is that we work with a lighter value um, and also I want to check my paper texture because I want to just be on the standard uh, paper texture and you can see that I'm just going to work on the same layer and I'm going to start off right up at the top here and just with a vertical stroke very very soft very gentle just create the look of some little distant trees and you're going to find that this mist that you're creating here, the, the real name of the painting here, uh, is important because it creates that distance between the tree lines and kind of gives you that, that feeling of distance. So very, uh, try not to go up and down with this brush, just a vertical stroke down and you're just going to get the look of a little uh, little evergreens in the distance. And we'll take that little foothill maybe down right about there. And then with your uh, two inch blender or even your uh, soft cloud blender, either one, uh, we're just going to softly blend those edges out and I'm going straight down from the from the edge of those trees and as I move forward, as I build another layer of foothills here, what we're going to do is get a little bit darker in value. So this time I'll go to a little darker value here, go back to the foliage and trees, and let's maybe start right about here and build up another layer of trees coming down. And just let that brush kind of do its thing. If you get some little flyouts, that's okay. Kind of makes it more interesting. I just wanted to comment that many, many people have been asking about your mixer pad and where you found, you know, the, the color variations that you have there. Yeah, these are... Uh, this is just a mixer pad, uh, Bob Ross colors, and if anybody would like it, um, you know, if you go to the Digital Art Academy website, contact me there, uh, and I will be happy to send it to you. You're free to have it, or I can give it to Tanya, and Tanya can send it out to everybody. That's not a problem. Great. Thank you so much. You bet. So you'll notice that as we get closer to the foreground that our trees are going to get a little darker in value and this is what we call atmospheric condition, atmospheric perspective. It gives us that feeling that things are in the distance because they're lighter and then they're going to get darker as we come into the foreground area. Okay, our trees are in and now I'm going to go back to my little two inch uh, two inch blender here and again we're just going to blend out and I'm going to take that color a little bit further down here very softly blend it just again so we're creating kind of that misty look 
While you're painting that, I've got quite a few questions coming in, um, and I don't have painter open, but is your palette knife a thick paint specific brush? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. It is thick paint. Uh huh. It is a thick paint palette knife. So you'll know that by the minute that you select a thick paint brush, you'll get this special uh, menu bar that'll come up and it will have the show or hide thick paint panel on it. So you do want to make sure that you uh, select that. And again, this grain height is real important to getting that texture or that paint break in your mountains. So if you have it down at a lower grain height, you're not going to get as much of this uh, paint break as you see here on the mountain as you would is if, if it's up higher. So if I mouse over this, you can see that choose the, uh, the height of the grain. So this is real important. So the higher values will reveal more of the paper texture. So you're, you're, the real fun thing about this is that you can go in here and you can pick some wonderful paper textures and, and you might find something different than what I chose here. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, uh, texture, paper textures that you can employ into your mountain to create that paint break or that textured look in your mountains. So that is an area that you can really experiment with and have some fun with. Okay. Uh, back to the uh, foliage and tree brush and I'm just going to pull in a couple of more and I think I'm going to go just a little bit darker with that one here. And just a few more right in front. And then again with that two inch blender, we'll just soften those edges a little bit. Now there's a brush that I'm going to show you here that you might have some fun with. Um, it's called the pinch cloud. And the way I like to use it here is I like to um, choose the V key, V as in Victor, and I use it to create a horizon uh, or a just a the land where the land is going to meet uh, the water here and I go ahead and pull it straight across and you can see that it creates a nice little uh, little line there that you can start developing your uh, ground plane from just remember that when you selected your V key go back to your B key B as in boy so you're painting instead of using uh, the straight line option. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that's clear. Now I'm going to pick up a brush called the script liner number one and uh, with that I'm going to uh, select just a real nice little pale color here. Maybe this mixture of uh, alizarin crimson with the white and I'm just going to pull a little bit of a uh, land mass out on the sides here and this gives us that little uh, plane where we can start building uh, building our our land mass up here a little bit and keep that nice and straight those lines nice and straight as they go across and then I'm going to pick up a brush next this is a real fun brush called sparkle on the water and I use it actually to create the shadows in the water and you're free to use uh, any brush you'd like but um, I'm going to go ahead and select a darker value here and then on my color wheel when you have something that's rather dark uh, like trees which will tend to be very dark in, in your landscapes one of the darkest uh, in terms of value when you reflect those trees into the water, they're always going to reflect a little bit lighter. So you want to make that just a wee bit lighter uh, in the water. And I use this brush by just going straight down and pulling down. So I'm just going to create these little reflections in the water. And I'm going to try and hurry here because I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> And this maybe. always happens no matter <laughs> who you're painting. And 
most people aren't trying to complete an entire painting. Okay. In a session, so no worries. I'm gonna try and explain this the best I can for you then. Okay. And then very soft pressure going across. You can just pull those little reflections into the water. Pull them down a little bit if you want and then just again we're trying to create that very uh, soft water effect. Very, very calm water. And Is I'm there all, any... Sorry. It's Go so ahead. hard to try and hop in. Is there any particular reason why you choose to paint at 150 rather than 300? Um, you know, just for today, um, I didn't want to tax uh, my computer with go to webinar. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably work at 250 to 300. Yeah. Okay. And that's and for the printing quality. It that's would be for printing quality, yeah. Um, if you're just practicing these, and, and I was going to mention, you know, I, I can't tell you how many of these I've done. Every time I do one, they come out differently. I I change things. I add things. So don't, don't feel that, uh, you know, you're going to you're going to, every one you do is going to be a little different, so you just play with it and have fun with it. But uh, every time you practice this, it, it, they get a little different, a little better. You have more fun with them. Oh, hello, Bob. There he is down in the corner. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're going to uh, move on over to the next step here and we're going to uh, pick up some, uh, we're going to go back to this nice dark uh, mountain mixture and we're going to pull in some trees in the foreground here and I'm going to do this relatively quick because I do want to get this, get this in for you. And I'm just going to start right about midpoint here and I'm using the, um, again, the foliage and tree brush and I'm just kind of going in a back and forth motion with this brush. And I'm just going to pull in a nice little evergreen tree here. And then I'm going to put another one right about here. Just going to go straight down from my trunk. and put in another one here and then how about one more over to the side here and you can see how quickly these kind of go in just back and forth kind of let the brush kind of do its thing and if you're not getting what I'm getting do some brush tracking I'm going to go back to the painting knife here, the same color, I'm not going to change the color, but I am going to go back to my papers and again go back to that window frost. We're going to choose paint with grain here and I'm going to just give and paint in a little bit of a land mass right below these trees. And then with some other colors, let's just go with maybe some little dark sienna here. We'll do some nice little highlights on the edge here. The nice thing about uh, the um, thick paint too is that if you, if you want to erase and you want to go into and maybe pull out some areas, choose the erase option here and you can just do a little bit of fine tuning and then go back to paint and maybe I'll go with even a little bit lighter value just right at the tip here and I'm going to move over to what we call the frosted foliage brush and since it's fall let's go ahead and maybe pick up some nice fall colors like yellow ochre and I'm going to use a relatively small brush here 
and just use that to employ the look of some foliage on the uh, beneath the trees here. I'm going to pick up now the uh, script liner again with some nice white and we're just going to float that right across the edge here and I'll go back to uh, just a plain old paper texture here and this creates a nice break in the water. Uh, again, I would pick up the uh, sparkle on the water here for the reflections of the trees. Let's go a little bit smaller with a brush. And just get some nice reflections there and then we'll go back and put in a little more white there for that edge. Now you could do the reflections with the uh, landscape brush as well. That's not a problem. Whatever brush works for you. And we'll go back to the script liner number one, some white, and then we'll just give a nice little effect of reflection in the water. And pull that forward a little bit. Um, the Foliage and trees, I think I would pick up a nice little green color and maybe do a few little highlights on the trees. And you don't want to go overboard with the highlights too much and, uh, you know, it'll just, it'll look overdone. So just wherever you think, you know, a highlight would be appropriate. You could also use the uh, two-inch landscape brush for this as well. And now we're going to move into the final steps and we're going to uh, again pick up the foliage and tree brush and I'm going to uh, find a nice color here and we're going to start by putting in a big evergreen right up here in the corner and again I'm going to do this real fast for you. <laughs> and get this tree in. And while you're painting that, I have had a few questions about the art pen, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that the art pen only works with Wacom tablets. It's a special pen that they have made for their tablets. Um, and I, I don't think that I'm wrong about that, Karen. Do you, I, I don't think it works with anybody else's tablets. I don't think so. Um, I don't, yeah, I would say that that's correct, yeah. It's a good investment, I would say, um, mostly because, you know, going forward and so many of the brushes that uh, we enjoy working with, with Painter, um, employ that full pen rotation of the, the, uh, uh, the barrel rotation, which is real key to a lot of effects and a lot of the brushes. So it's a good one, good one to have in your arsenal. Now I would probably put some more highlights on those trees and do something like that. Now I'm going to go over to the uh, frosted foliage brush and we're going to go with a really dark color here, almost black. Um, nice big brush and I'm going to start putting in some background and this goes, this will go pretty quick here. We'll get this done for you. And I'm just tapping this, uh, tapping away here. And again, it's fall, so I think it would be fun to maybe employ the look of 
fall trees. So we're setting up our darker values in the background here. Let's go ahead and bring those all the way over. Nice dark values down here. I use my Alt key a lot to sample colors now at this point. There we go. And since it's fall, let's go ahead and get some nice bright colors. So let's start with that maybe Indian yellow. And right at the very tops of these trees, we'll go ahead and start to build our trees. And it's important to leave a little bit of that dark coming through because that's what creates that illusion of depth and into the painting. Go a little bigger down here at the bottom. We'll do the same over here. Maybe go with a nice bright green color. Remember to leave a little bit of that dark again coming through. Okay, maybe some nice, um, let's go over here and maybe pick up a little bit of that burnt sienna and pull that in down towards the bottom. We're going to uh, choose the, uh, let's go back to the foliage and tree brush and this time I'm going to select again that window frost and I'm going to select titanium white here and we're going to pull in some nice aspen trees. coming out of the branches here. Start at the bottom here and maybe pull in a few here. It's very soft um, fluid brush strokes here to create some of the branches coming out. Okay, and then finally we're going to go to the, again, we'll go to the script liner number one. We've still got that really nice uh, window frost texture selected. We'll come, make sure that you come up to your advanced brush control, I'm sorry, not the advanced brush controls, but to your, um, it's going to open, let me close that to your dab options here and make sure that you have apply dab, op, apply dab stencil paper selected. And then um, I'm going to pick up this uh, dark sienna here and we're going to paint just a little bit of a look of a little path right here. We're going to get all that nice texture coming through. Maybe a little darker at the edge here, just so you have that little look of a path right here. And again, you can go back to your frosted foliage brush. Just have fun putting in different colors. And finally, there's the happy flower brush. So say, for example, you want to pull in maybe some Nice little flowers here. The final details are really up to you and where you go with this. Um, 
Tanya, I think that's about it. <laughs> Everybody is amazed at your painting. <laughs> and oh my gosh, those mountains are just popping off the painting. They're, it's, I, I'm shocked. I can't even believe that you just finished the bottom <laughs> half of this in like five minutes. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, again, I want to uh, reiterate that, um, you know, I have been using Painter for, for years and years and years now, and my students know and people that know me I know that I, I have quite a uh, different um, approach in many ways. I learn, uh, I like to go off and do all kinds of things from cloning to painting to portrait work all over the board. But there's something very, very freeing and very, very relaxing about just opening up a canvas and letting it happen, just seeing what comes out. And, uh, you know, this is really, really exciting to do. And it's just um, a good exercise for everybody, I think. Um, you know, because many times when we're, we're so used to looking at photographs, we're so used to approaching it in a certain way, when we approach something totally different where we just use our imagination and we, we create something beautiful in our, in our, uh, you know, in our mind, then it, it's, it's really a freeing thing and it's a, a good exercise. And I, I really encourage everybody to try it every once in a while <laughs> because it is a good thing to, uh, to do. Well, you have most definitely inspired everybody in the session. I can't even keep up with all the comments that are coming in and so I will save these and send these to you, Karen, because this is, these are more comments regarding how beautiful this is and um, how happy everybody is than I've seen in quite a while. So. This was truly impressive. Um, I really hope that all of you are inspired to go and create your own work and that you're willing to share it with us. I really hope that you'll do that. Um, don't forget, you can post those in the Discovery Center. That's learn.corel.com if you go to the painting section. And then also don't forget to, if you want some more training, go take a course at Digital Art Academy. They're the best classes, guys. It, they're wonderful. Um, I think all of them are led by, for the most part, painter masters. Karen, you might have a few instructors that um, are coming from other areas of the world. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I can attest to the fact of how wonderful those classes are. So please check it out. And before I forget, Karen, I just want to coordinate with you after this um, in regards of where we can get that image posted yeah. for the mixer pad because a lot of people are very interested in it. Yeah, not a problem. Um, the mixer pad is a good way to work too. And um, this, this little final painting here that I have uh, just on the, uh, the screen right now is just my tribute to Bob Ross and just trying to pull everything together that that uh, I learned from watching his videos and uh, you know I think he'll just continue to live in everybody uh, in in art as we go forward and and just take the time to have some fun and paint it it's a it's a great experience so thank you everybody for being here today thank you Tanya thank you Karen this is amazing mm -hmm.